So what I understand by open government is about how we do government. Um, uh, where lots of people focus on what you need to do, which policy, um, uh, what's the next bit of reform. Uh, but you can't do any of those reforms, uh, in my view, unless you work out how you do them. Um, so uh, I see open government uh, as that really big, broad um, umbrella of uh, accountability, um, uh, openness and transparency uh, and uh, involving uh, the people in your population uh, are to, to be involved in the decisions that affect them. Um, so uh, it really, really matters that people trust government. It is about how uh, we behave in a trustworthy way. Uh, and for me, that feels really important. So two things really matter in the way open government works. Um, uh, and one is around um, making sure that there is easy access to information. Um, so easy access to information, whatever it is. Proactive publication, being thoughtful about how you make sure that whatever you're doing um, is really visible and people can hold you to account for it. Um, but, but also uh, you need to be much more thoughtful uh, about how you involve people. And that's not about a single method. So it doesn't matter whether you're using uh, user research, design thinking, um, uh, whether you're using deliberative democracy, um, uh, participatory budgeting, all of these are methods. The important thing um, is that you have the skills and expertise in order for that to be a productive and uh, an effective way of working so that people in, in who work in government and people who work in civil society can see how um, uh, they get the skills and how they are able to use them um, so that we can uh, frankly get better outcomes. The pandemic also highlighted a couple of things. Uh, one is that um, public services needed to get much better at working together. Um, uh, so health services and local authorities, um, national governments and uh, the, their other public services. Uh, I think that was a really strong thing here. Uh, we, had, we saw some really um, helpful initiatives, particularly around data, but, but also around um, uh, public health and uh, information sharing, that kind of thing. Um, also, being thoughtful about the ethics of all of that. So much of the work we did in Scotland was around thinking about the ethics of how you share information, how you make sure you do that while protecting the individual um, uh, uh, person, but, but really protect the community. Uh, and all of that really, really mattered uh, because actually you do need people to comply. Uh, and you, if you're in a health emergency, you really need people to believe what government is telling it. Uh, and you need people um, uh, in order to, to, to see the bigger picture. Uh, and that again is about how much information you shared. So for instance, our first minister, right through um, uh, the worst year and a half of the pandemic, uh, went on television almost every day to give an update uh, because she felt that leadership was really important and that visibility um, so that people could um, uh, ask questions and uh, and um, really see that there was uh, someone in control and that really helped I think. So the problems we have internationally are global. Uh, they aren't, uh, um, uh, but they have an impact incredibly locally. Uh, so the open government principles can be applied to whatever the highest priority is in your area. Uh, so in Scotland, we have looked very particularly at the things people said they cared about. Um, so the um, ideas about how you understand the flow of money in Scotland. So fiscal transparency, thinking about that. Uh, we have a commitment around how you get people involved in some of the big decisions around um, health and social care reforms. Uh, and the third one is around climate um, change. Uh, and these are big 
big issues wherever you are in the world. Uh, and the real advantage of um, uh, open government is that there will be another government somewhere who is experiencing the same sort of issues. So sharing learning, sharing some of that really powerful um, uh, uh, experimentation uh, so that you know uh, what that testing is, is going to do. So you can uh, work in your own uh, country with a bit more assurance, with a bit of help from uh, outside, but also sharing the learning that we are getting. The main organization of Open Government Partnership, uh, led by uh, Sanjay Pradhan, um, uh, are extraordinary in their reach. Uh, and they are so supportive uh, and really are able to drive really strong links to the Sustainable Development Goals, to thinking about democracy, to being really active uh, in open data and um, the ethics around um, uh, AI, to be really thoughtful about anti-corruption uh, and really when there's an, uh, uh, an obvious need um, to shift resources uh, in order to do that. Um, so they are able to be much more agile than perhaps a state or a UN organization is able to be. Um, uh, they are of course um, relatively small, um, but I think that's a, uh, that's a help. Uh, but it's now 120 odd members uh, around the world. That is a lot of places uh, that are keen to do reform. Not all are doing the same reforms. Um, there is a, a really wide range uh, of the how uh, in different jurisdictions. Uh, but I think the, th the thread that really runs through it is that the members want life for their population to be better. Uh, and, and that is has got to be an aim uh, that is good for any jurisdiction. So each time you do an open government plan, uh, we go out to the population and ask what really matters to them. Um, so in those kinds of workshops and discussions with civil society organizations and with citizens, um, uh, we, we make sure we test the ideas that are of most uh, importance and, and that the focus of energy is on the places that really matter. Um, so when the, the pandemic came along, we looked at how we made sure we were listening to people, how we made sure we got the information we needed and were measuring the right things, how we put the ethics uh, into place around the changes we needed to make around, particularly around digital, um, uh, to make make sure that even though we were having to make decisions so much faster than we had been, um, we were doing that without losing any standards. Um, so all of these elements uh, really help. I think it, it helps that there is a culture of that within government. It isn't easy and I don't have roots into every single ministry or um, uh, part of, of government, uh, but there is a very general acceptance um, within Scottish government that reform is the right thing, uh, that, that we want our population to have better lives. Um, uh, and that really helps, I guess. We're a long way from perfect. We're a long way from having all of these, either the resources or the capacities to do it as well as we would like to do. Um, uh, but it, there's a direction of travel which really matters. Uh, and, and open government um, with the, the uh, action plan process gives you the opportunity to, to make that, uh, that sort of direction of travel really clear. It is really important that we are always able to give fair, balanced evidence uh, and that we are providing people with sufficient information um, to vote or to respond uh, in a way that they have an understanding of the issue. Uh, I think around the world we see a real problem with misinformation and disinformation. Uh, the uh, fantastic technology that allows us to do all sorts of very clever um, e-government things uh, with data uh, is also the source of 
one of our, our biggest democratic problems, uh, which is that people actually get their news from a much narrower band uh, of um, sources uh, and the algorithms that go into that um, feed people what they have said they want to hear. Um, so that that narrowing uh, of um, uh, information sources actually is uh, counterintuitive uh, to the idea that um, uh, was hoped for uh, the internet. Uh, of course, it isn't everyone, uh, but we we need to be really thoughtful. So uh, OECD and uh, Open Government have been really thoughtful about how that communications uh, element uh, is such an important one. Um, being uh, putting out really um, uh, you know useful information so people can really see uh, what it is um, they are responding to, whatever the um, uh, electoral situation, whether it's uh, uh, local government elections, national elections, UK elections, or indeed an independence reference, uh, referendum. All of these need to have, people need to have um, uh, a balanced way uh, of understanding uh, that the, um, uh, what they're voting on.